Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the pre India Internet Governance Forum session, which is on a very important topic of a voice based internet. You've got some very, very prominent uh, people on the panel today. Uh, but before I introduce them, let me first go into the issue itself and then I'll bring back uh, the two panelists. Um, so, the, the, uh, you know, India is one of the largest uh, uh, countries with the largest population of print blind. What print blind essentially means is people who are not able to access written information. And although at a breakneck speed, we are rolling out internet. Uh, in today's world in India with um, uh, various initiatives uh, which are being coordinated through Kati Shakti. It's a prime minister's program. We are coordinating them through uh, Bharat Net 1, Bharat Net 2, and now the very, very ambitious Bharat Net 3 program that we have, which is again one of the largest uh, telecom program that uh, is going on in the world. Uh, but if people are not able to read what is there on the screen, then we are going to see this problem. And that's a very unique Indian problem because we have about 290 million people who are illiterate, therefore they can't read, and about um, 19 million people who are visually challenged and therefore, again, they cannot read. So what is it that we need to do to make sure that our internet is made for the 25% of our population who are print blind? <clears throat> and for that, we are fortunate to have uh, Krishna Kant Mane, one of the leading foremost visually challenged in our country. Um, he is not only a computer scientist, he's also an entrepreneur who has been coming out with technologies which are uh, for the visually challenged as well as uh, the normally abled. Uh, we also have a leading uh, lawyer who is who has, a, who, has, who has focused on issues related to <clears throat> accessibility uh -huh. and internet and digital. Uh, and we've got uh, Bagmishika Pukan Puhan, uh, who's also an associate um, a partner with one of the leading firms uh, in India. <clears throat> uh, with that, I'll start off with my first question to Krishnakant Mane. Uh, Krishnakant or KK, as you are popularly called, um, <laughs> what is your views on the internet not being accessible? And therefore, what are the alternatives that we have uh, to enable the internet to be accessed by people who are not able to access it in the normal way. You see, uh, first of all, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's uh, a lovely panel which uh, we have put up here, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, be a part of this. Uh, so, Jajit, to answer your question, you see, uh, you have already given the stats, and that's saved quite a bit of uh, my time. Percent people are uh, print blind. Uh, also, there is another factor: people who are not really print, print blind, but you know, this micro businesses, they uh, have this this placebo of not getting onto these mobile apps, and you know, uh, and 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 they somehow have a problem typing uh, stuff in. You know, they may not have a problem of reading it, but they have definitely a problem of typing things, and uh, as a result, you can also consider them into that category. Now, what happens is. Let's say you have uh, uh, you enter a society wherein you have got you know uh, airports all over the place and you have got uh, you know uh, aeroplanes, but if you don't have uh, a proper runway which can actually take the load, then apparently there is no use of saying that we are speeding up the country and 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 so the same situation is here. We have 5G now, and it's least to say that even the remotest of the villages in India has good internet. It was a problem some time back, but now it's not uh, a problem, so, so to speak. Now, when there is so much of uh, print blindness, as you rightly pointed out, and a lot of these people are traders, they are small traders, they are small service providers, and we are not here talking about people who can afford to use huge uh, ERP softwares and you know big, big accounting softwares. We are talking about those roadside shops. We are talking about rural traders. We are talking about small micro businesses often run by, uh, you know, uh, challenged people, often run by disabled people. Now, if 
we don't make this system inclusive there are a few problems which happen number one they wouldn't come in the uh, infrastructure network of the online trade because everything today is uh, online number two they because government wants everyone to be a part of the gst network which is a really good thing because they will also it's not just about paying taxes you get input credits and all they will not be able to avail any of these things as a result the value of their business goes down number three uh, the overall business scalability of this people always remains uh, you know subpar because other people who can afford softwares other people who can who are not uh, print blind then then this is an unfair playing ground for those small uh, you know uh, people who are self employed and are providing services now if this happens then there will be a general unrest in the business sector as well and then there will be only a few uh, who would be really you know getting all the benefits of uh, whatever government has to offer and the masses for whom the government really wants to do stuff are going to be left out and this is exactly where the problem comes in great so i think that's very very perceptive and kk uh, let me um, you know allow me to quote something that you have been uh, quoting very often which is that uh, even under normal circumstances uh, those who are supposed to be not having any challenges end up having challenges because if they are driving a car and they need yeah. to see the internet they can't see the internet because they're driving exactly. a car <clears throat> right so i'll just borrow that from you and i'll have a follow up question so what do you mean by a voice based internet uh, kk so a voice based internet is exactly what uh, you know that that is the reason this is one of those fortunate jargons which are self explanatory but i'll go more deep into it apparently it means that uh, you see if, if there are people who are from the non technical uh, line i'll give you a simple analogy so when you talk about computer because a mobile a laptop everything is a computer all all the things are computers right now just like humans uh, there would be different different senses we have five uh, a computer can have many senses right uh, so how do you do the information in and information out because this is how humans communicate there is an information in you get an input of information which is sensory and you give output which is the motor response now what does a computer do there are various outputs like you would so have a screen outputs. you would have a printer you know all all that stuff similarly there are several inputs which is keyboard mouse okay now one of those senses is also a microphone these days now the best way to put a microphone to use is to see to it that people who are print blind who cannot see uh and people who cannot type because it's both ways now uh to a great extent people who are who cannot uh, see for a person like myself uh the problem is sorted out because if there's voice driven system everything on the internet can work through voice as in you know making payments receiving payments or uh, you know communicating or sending quotations or receiving uh, intimations about you know uh, stuff like invoices and all now if you are going to have a virtual or a physical keyboard involved all the time then again the problem which we talked about comes in but if the internet is voice driven if we can have uh, a lot of interfaces which are purely voice driven and they are online why online because you have to have them access anytime anywhere and you know things like uh, if if i give you a very common analogy nowadays when i go to you know buy vegetables or, or even at the roadside and you make a payment through gpay or uh, whichever means you know there is a small machine which says you know paytm per x amount prop prapt hua kind of a thing see the miracle now everyone as a result people who are really technophobic are now installing those machines they are going online and now because then they don't have to worry about whether i have got the payment whether i have got the payment right if there is a disabled person who doesn't know whether the person is giving you the right amount and all it happens without moving your hands so while driving what you are doing your hands are on the steering wheel while doing business and imagine a shop where there are only two or three people working and and the load is very heavy now with medium or large scale companies you have got a huge lot of teams for different different things but these small and micro businesses hardly have four or five people working with them so they don't even have an hr payroll for that matter so they they have limited hands you know and as i jokingly keep on saying ki logon ke hath kanun nahi hai lambe karne ke liye so what happens as a result is that they don't have that much time that much uh, you know capacity or bandwidth to all the all the time be stuck to a laptop or a mobile and do stuff so when you are online you have to have a uh, ways to save time of a person who's low on resources which is the case with small and micro businesses and for that reason you have to have a both way voice driven system 
it's not just about uh, receiving feedback it's also about giving feedback now we have alexa and, and and stuff like that but we have to see to it that they are in tune with the local indian systems because the vocabulary the lingo the the kind of uh, jargons uh, you know local traders for example use in the villages they vary so much that we have to have very very smart online voice driven systems is which can learn uh, by themselves by more and more data so that has to be totally hands free right great no thanks so that brings me to bag mishika uh, bag mishika as an associate partner at tnt law practice um what do you think are the challenges of a voice based internet you know for example can we have a voice based click wrap agreement that is prevalent in the usual internet websites can we have all the legal uh, foundations in a voice based internet or are there new challenges that we will be facing thanks jagjit now from whatever kk has already discussed about if i have to borrow the discussions that he has brought to the fore we have a large population which is finding difficulty in maneuvering through the internet be it to connect with other resources or to be able to get into an engagement with another party or for that matter to be you know able to use it in their regular uh, day to day business or day to day lives now one of the best aspects to this that we can actually draw from and look into our own uh, legal uh, structure in india is that because of the parallel, because of the challenge that was there in terms of uh, literacy or in terms of the education levels in the country you look at the sector of healthcare which is highly sensitive and highly regulated we see that there has been and there continues to be an arrangement where for the purposes of i'm talking here from the perspective of clinical trials where for focused participation in clinical trials again a very sensitive issue there has always been a model and there have been proper codes of conduct following the who practices as well where a voice based consent regime is accepted now within that to ensure the logic was that because in clinical trials the participation is not just from a large you know from uh, high uh, social classes but also from you know people who are either disabled or people who have uh, disabilities in form of you know basic communication skills and literacy to overcome this there was a concept of audio visual recordings which was introduced where it was ensured that for the purposes of explaining to the participant that they will be participating in this uh, highly sensitive and um, you know significant uh, clinical trial the logic was that they could record their consent in an audio visual format the logic which is driven to this was that a person first communicates to them probably in a language familiar to them that this is what the consequences of a trial would be and this is what will be involved and it was to elicit their consent that for the first time we saw that audio visual consent was allowed for to be treated as consent for the participation in clinical trials within this itself now since we are talking focusing mostly on voice based internet within that also for the purposes of safeguarding privacy of individuals let's say who are suffering from communicable uh, diseases like leprosy and aids it was decided that they would they would move away from audio visual requirement to only audio based connections now while you know there is this i am discussing more from the point of view of clinical trials um and i will of course come back to this later when uh, through this discussion the uh, structure or the regime in which we are currently you know uh, living in and practicing you will see i mean one of the fair points that kk actually mentioned is that even for today to make inputs and outputs uh, especially he gave the example of paytm here one of the essential elements that he was trying to you know uh, point out is that is a case of notification there as an output what the machine gives me is a notification of receipt of money however for an input if i am using a voice based system imagine to uh, tomorrow i mean if i am using let's say not just to dictate a text which is now enabled on android devices and ios devices equally but if i am initiating a financial transaction through voice based communication only there is a, an inherent susceptibility or there is an inherent potential of abuse that may be caused and that is probably one of the reasons why we are seeing that the adoption in that sense is not highly prevalent or there has not been too much of test cases for us to discuss on while of course it has it comes with its own set of benefits 
but to answer your specific question as in how the voice based consent regime currently stands or how we are looking at it from an indian perspective right now it has very limited application and we are seeing that the limited application is mostly focused in the healthcare sector when i'm talking about law apart from that when we are talking about you know uh, devices or connectivity again it's just limited to the point of inputs being for the purpose of let's say dictation and text and here again jaisi i'll have to bring to the fore that this is again used by healthcare sector a lot when you see that today if for electronic medical records or for health information systems you see a lot of healthcare practitioners and uh, healthcare institutions relying of, upon uh, softwares and tools which create entire records of an uh, individual's medical history or treatment journey on that particular software so uh, i mean uh, this is my immediate uh, response to the question that you have put forth i mean if you have any follow up question then i'll address that or probably we can come back to me later no absolutely i have some uh, you know very uh, if you follow up questions based on what you mentioned we will start tickling my uh, thoughts um you know given that uh, we have this population which is uh, signing off agreements which is putting some print on agreements and saying done you know i have accepted this and then falling into debt traps and all kinds of situation we have you know a whole bunch of popular hindi movies made on this where angota chap dalke you had uh, accepted uh, which essentially means that there was no consent based acceptance of the agreements so the point is um, will will a voice based agreement be upheld in the court of law and what is needed uh, to be to be added and what needs to be strengthened in order to ensure that such agreements are um, are accepted in the court of law or more widely what should be the role of government in fact to enable such an infrastructure uh, thanks rajit so here i will add one thing that uh, in the court of law as of now so i'll again go back to the healthcare example that is the only sector which has been tested in terms of audio consent or allowing for an entire journey to be undertaken by an individual basis their voice based consent or inputs now coming to the fact that where now we have come to the very convenient ecosystem of just clicking on an i agree or submitting that i accept or just accepting a tick box in a particular app or in an agreement or in an end user legal uh, license agreement if that is something that we can base upon for entering into a valid contract with a large entity or to enter into a standard form of contract there is nothing stopping us from doing it replicating it otherwise also beyond the scope however like i mentioned that the only point where we have seen this has been tested is in the healthcare now that's not the use case for any other i mean still remains untested while i'm at this i'll just add one more point quickly that if most of us who have ever used a digital service you know um a digital signature certificate we were always asked to create a recording saying that i am so and so this is my id proof to establish that validity or to bring in that additional layer of identification of me as an individual there is nothing stopping us to actually create something like that in our contracts to ensure that people who have any limitation to be able to you know communicate in a particular language or to be able to read through text because you know today even ms word allows me for discussion it also allows me to listen to something same thing tomorrow if we are using a washington post uh, application or an economist even they are reading our news articles to us same thing with the pdf i can still listen to you know the text it's written so if along with that if i go inside another tool which is either a voice recording or an additional you know like i mentioned about the dsc system then the fact that i have established a valid identity and then i'm tagging that identity to the consent consenting to a particular agreement or to an engagement that could be something which could be you know looked favorably by uh, courts also so that to ensure that there is no due risk or you know undue coercion that i have uh, been subjected to to submit my bill for right now that brings me to krishnakant mane who is a technology expert uh, in this area is krishnakant you know um, i can always claim that um, hey i did not make this recording this is done by a deep fake uh, this was um, you know recorded in another um uh, system and it's not uh, something which is uh, repudiable which is non repudiable so what is the infrastructure that we would need to make it non repudiable and therefore dependable and therefore it can be upheld in the court of law from a technology perspective good i was i was hoping you will ask this i'll give you a, even one step further forget about uh, hey it was not uh, recorded or fake 
i can't remember because since you raised the uh, movies are very good analogies you see i can't remember the name of that movie uh, or was it dubbed in hindi independence day or what i don't know that you know the, uh, there was a, a terrorist who had like uh, hacked into the system and was going to launch a nuclear missile and uh, the password to do anything with that was like, i think what dulhan ki bidai ka waqt badalna hai so if you want to change something you have to say this and i mean that person has to say it no one else can say it and only if his voice is recognized the password is valid and then you can change stuff so our military officer goes there and he gets him into talking and dheere dheere one by one one by one uh, phrases he gets there's a kid sitting at the other end who is receiving this uh, audio samples he puts them together very finely without glitches and all and then it is played to the computer with, with the terrorist's voice and the password is accepted so here you are even going one step further i mean this is although it's a it's a movie but it may as well happen like you know my voices can be taken in phrases and to be exactly used the way it is now uh, one thing is that you will have to have a good deal of uh, you know i'll tell you it 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 may not be 100% uh, you know full proof but to at least make it 99 or 99.9% full proof uh, there are various textual uh, you know fields of voices i have done a bit of uh, modest work on natural language processing and voice recognition there are some you know finer aspects of voice and i think ibm has worked a lot uh, on that as well google is doing it so just recording the voices having the uh, understandability or legibility of the voices and processing it is not enough there is an individual signature to a person's voice which is uh, nowadays forensically also you can prove it if someone says that you know this video was doctored and this wasn't my audio i mean bagmishika can get into uh, the law more on this but i know already forensic people are able to figure out what we will have to do is uh, develop cost effective means of you know doing uh, things what the forensic labs do when uh, someone claims that my video or audio was a fake one to have it down in an affordable way and uh, to you know the same level or perhaps more accurate level of uh, what it is today because every voice has you know a proper uh, signature dk there is a signature sustenance of every word that a person speaks the envelope so to speak there's there's this envelope with the uh, sound wave no right now what is happening is you take the sound wave you take the word patterns and you process it and and the computer understands but you will have to have a more accurate way of processing a signature envelope of every voice and even a mimicry artist no matter how good a mimicry artist is he will not be able to accurately mimic the voice 100% i'll tell you i mean i have sharper ears uh, jd has been with me enough and he would know it uh, we have met several times i can tell you whether a person is imitating or not imitating even if he is a very good mimicry artist so that's my side but computers can be more accurate so you know the signature envelopes have to be processed more forensically i guess and that's where a lot of uh, work has to go right uh, so kk you know taking that forward clearly none of that infrastructure exists with either the judiciary or the government and more importantly for the judiciary as well as by uh, the uh, the enforcement agencies yes. so i i would then draw a conclusion that that is an infrastructure that needs to be put up for us yes, to take things true. forward yes, that's so. yes yes right yes. so and it has to be online yeah it has to be online absolutely absolutely it has to be in servers which are uh which are notified by the judiciary that those are acceptable yes. servers and therefore they are time stamped and non repeatable as well as yes. there are additional layers of uh, checks and balances so that yes. deep fakes and ais uh, do not take over yes. so having said that krishna kan you have worked very deeply in uh in in coming out with solutions uh for the for the good of indians uh, as well as for those who are print blind so what has been your entrepreneurial journey in this area and what are your vision moving forward what do you plan to do uh, to enable voice based applications to happen yeah vision is uh, the word you uh, said because i always keep telling people you know because people ask me that you, know, you yourself are uh, totally visually disabled and how come uh, you are into all this so i always keep telling them vision is more important than eyesight you have to have a vision whether you have an eyesight or not uh, really won't matter and if you could manage to develop the things which we are talking about right now then eyesight will really not matter as a matter of fact so as far as my uh, journey is concerned uh it has always been like this see when i was uh, just you know in my uh, early 20s i got into uh, engineering because i always was fascinated when i was hardly 14 15 years i knew that 
you know this is uh, this is one technology which is going to take the humans accuracy efficiency and uh, you know uh, what you can say creativity the accuracy efficiency and creativity to an infinite height you know and today it's all true i mean today now uh, there are artificial intelligence uh, systems making music forget about voice recognition so uh, i always had that thought and i was uh, actively contributing to things which could serve the digitally underserved and in countries like india they, it's a huge population right they are digitally underserved i wouldn't go as far to say that they are not served they are definitely everyone has a mobile now but they are underserved so they don't have all the benefits of uh, the usual stuff or something which they ought to so in that process when i for example worked on orca i think you were then with sun microsystems and sun had funded this entire thing and i was one of the initial pioneers of that uh, entire thing and uh, that actually created a big uh, revolution because when uh, that the free talking screen did the free talking software orca when it came out we did a work with tamil nadu government uh, if, if anyone if you want you can google uh, true vision you know and elcot electronics corporation of tamil nadu i was the one who led that project and orca was at the at the center of that entire project where we uh, taught you know visually disabled people to use it so education was also raised and they they apparently got employment because proprietary uh, talking softwares were there but they would cost you 1 lakh rupees a license and you can understand if they are digitally underprivileged how much they can afford so we did that after that i also realized i was an independent consultant you know working for a lot of uh, uh, other companies and in and, and that process i realized the small and micro businesses have one fundamental problem the problem is they don't have that volume of requirement of complex features in a software in a business software number one number two they don't have knowledge of accounting or you know uh, advanced trade and number three they cannot afford huge huge uh, softwares of huge brands so what do we do so what we ended up doing is uh, nixie in fact had funded uh, my initiative back in 2009 and we developed something called as uh, gnu khata which is an open source uh, accounting and invoicing software which by the way is uh, taught in curriculums in maharashtra in, in elementary commerce and even in kerala and a lot of people uh, volumes and volumes of people are using it and it is actually also generated employment because since it is in school curriculums and college curriculums uh, there are people who are running classes uh, teaching new khata and then i thought uh, to make it more enterprise so inspired by that uh, actually me and my wife finally co-founded a company called bookmatic private limited and we launched an online version of uh, a billing software but what we did over there was we automated the accounting so when a, a small or a micro business you know what they do is they have uh, their bills their typical bills and they have typical receipts and payments there is no hr there is no payroll there is no production planning the small and uh, service providers and micro businesses don't need it so we said hey why not uh, make a software which is specific to that requirement limited features only what they need and give it at a very very low rate so like 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees a year is is what we give and uh, we have a free mobile app as well and now what we are thinking is so we have automated the accounting part so but still person has to make invoices right person has to make bills they have to record bills now what we think is uh, that's the reason uh, i was very interested with this panel is to do even that automatically so if a certain person says 3 kilo sabzi ka bill banao no or whatever it is i am i am talking in a very crude way just the way he will tell his assistant so he doesn't even need an assistant and then if the bill is generated and if the payment is done automatically and of course nowadays you have this talking paytm machines and all and he also gets the intimation of pay, uh, payment done imagine this is completely hands free even an anguta chap in your uh, analogy can use it even a disabled person can use it a blind person person who has who is having no hands chalo print disabled ko chhod dete a person may not be print disabled what about people who don't have hands they can't even type they will have to rely i mean the thakur of shole kind of a person what what such a person would do even if he is literate he would need such technologies right so this is our next uh, pioneering step we are putting that we should have these voice driven interfaces even for you know small trades where in the accounting is automated and the bills are voice driven right so kk just for um, a upfront declaration the reason i'm i used bollywood analogies is because yeah. of your close association with bollywood you've been interviewed <laughs> by amir khan and you've come on shows and so on and yes. so forth yes uh, and that's the reason that i chose to do that no, and then there But are the two mirrors as well right 
Absolutely. Those movies are true mirrors. That is the reason I gave the example of that password being, uh, you know, collated together and saved the mankind. Right. So you know that brings me back to Bag Michiga, and I think Bag Michiga, you might be on mute. Um, uh, so uh, you know we have a population of print blind, which is two nine two hundred ninety people, ninety million people visually challenged, twenty million people who. are uh, 290 billion people who are illiterate uh, 20 million people who are visually challenged so 310 million of market size which is almost as big as europe but we see that the developments are happening in in us and other places in terms of voice enabled access you know it's not voice uh, developed internet but voice uh, enabled access you have alexa which is getting more and more prevalent you got you know google solutions but we don't see such solutions coming up in india and um, why is that because the market is here and still we don't see solutions coming up here thanks rajit so i will uh, pick again borrow something from what krishnakant mentioned during his discussion he highlighted a very important element that when we are looking at when we are talking about voice print of individuals that's also very unique to an individual i mean including be my intonation about a particular word it could be my modulation when i am speaking in a particular context and the fact that you know uh, this is actually particularly more significant from the european context we have seen that for the purpose of recognition if i am using voice inputs for an individual to identify or to establish that this is coming from let's say abagmishika or ajayjit be it to an uh, I'll, i'll focus i'll limit this to let's say an okay google or siri for this discussion we saw that especially siri moved uh, and same with okay google they moved from a particular timeline where they would only recognize a particular accent to now when i have an apple device i can set that i am my input voice input would be an indian accent or would be a larger asian accent or i can you know select it with british or american australian now yes you are right that it's, so we have seen that these developments are taking place in the west more but i think one of the reasons i mean again i will not speak from the business point of view but i am seeing that there's a lot of cost which goes into creating uh, a software or a technology which will not just ensure that there is a level of authentication which is attributed to a particular voice print which is extremely distinct to an individual the issue or the challenge added to this is that because voice prints are very much typical to an individual and they can identify they have the capability of identifying an individual per se there are challenges related to privacy now that's why i mentioned that in the european context this plays out a major role is because when i am limiting my conversation let's say to just a voice input saying that you know um, let's say siri shut down my phone or uh, siri open the app and send a message to so and so person Now that's okay, but when I'm going to the point of let's say calling, asking Siri to call up my healthcare practitioner and then probably issue and uh, you know call up my uh, hospital and ask them to send out an ambulance because I might be suffering from uh, a hypertensive, uh, you know, there could be a infection. I could be thinking that I'm suffering from a heart attack because there is elements of you know other health information. and this i'm giving from a health perspective but it could also be that if i'm initiating a bank transaction it's carrying financial details now that entire input will stop being just personal data it will qualify to be sensitive personal data which is again required to be monitored or kept in a very secure manner because there are so many overlaps with how law will just not look at it from the point of view of identifying that yes this command has come from this the owner of the device because it has implications with other laws like i particularly mentioned data privacy i think companies here because in the absence of clear absence of uh, comprehensive data privacy legislation i think the companies here are not willing to put in the expend that kind of uh, money in creating a solution in house till they do not know what the law is going to say tomorrow so you know in that example that he mentioned about the movie 16 december where he said that you know some uh, there's this uh, particular terrorist who tried to uh, bring together a string of clips and create that voice command for a password imagine let's not uh, go to the extent of a terrorist activity being caused but imagine that construct being created even for a simple task of sending someone a thousand rupees or for that matter today when we are living in such an interconnected world for that matter you know creating let's say like i said to give a doctor and uh, 
um, input about my health condition or for that matter uh, my legal advisor and input about what i am doing right now so because of these you know unwarranted challenges and there is you know such a uh, high un- uh, scope of uncharted territory here both from legal and uh, a business risk perspective i think that's why we are not seeing a lot of adoption here in the country right so you know bagmishika if i take that forward um clearly uh, voice based uh, contracts will be of um, importance even in the western area right yeah. uh, for the reasons that you just mentioned you know for example clinical trials you need to make sure that the person understands and then for each of those clauses needs to be explained and explained in a manner that the person understands not wrapped up in uh, legal jargon right which even we don't understand in spite of having a fairly good grasp of uh, english Uh, but legally is a separate language altogether right yeah. in fact if i look at it uh, from the from that perspective of who all understand legally it will be less than 0.01% of the population the rest are all you know legally sprint blind if i can say that uh, and therefore it makes a lot of sense to simplify things and um, and have voice based contracts and so on uh, in fact if i look at it from the perspective of ensuring that those who are above the age of 18 are the ones who are agreeing to contracts Uh, then technology along with voice based um, you know signatures can help identifying that so what i'm driving at bakmishika is a question as to why the west is not taking a lead in in having a voice based contracts and voice based agreements okay here i think i'll have to take a leap of faith when i'm uh, you know giving you an answer to this uh, again even in west um, from what we have seen even in terms of forensics they are advanced they have those capabilities where they can make the determination that depending on the modulation or the structure in which a person is framing their sentences if it's actually coming stemming from an individual or not while they do have the wherewithal of creating voice enabled systems again in the west is also i mean first things first law always uh, you know is subsequent to technology technology always precedes so there and it goes in leaps and bounds ahead of what how the law follows one of the uh, reasons i mentioned is privacy is a challenge that's why they do not want to take that step second thing it's also a cost now the reason the coming back to the example of clinical trials because the, here there the test bed or the large uh, population that's there is something which could be subjected to a matter of life and death that's why they made this abundantly clear that somebody has to explain to them in their own language they understand and they go ahead and make the signature now coming to the simple aspect of executing a plain and simple contract which could be a commercial contract between two parties who are capable of entering into that agreement and they can actually sign that agreement but because of paucity of time or because of remote uh, presence they want to execute it in a voice and built environment one of the reasons which comes to my mind why they would not uh, they would want to be reluctant to bring into the this into the regular practice is there is a requirement to have consent being preserved somewhere now imagine today a signature uh, if scanned might carry a lesser space a storage space as opposed to a voice command because when i'm trying to record a voice for an individual just to mark the fact like because you also mentioned that there is a essence of element of time stamp being attributed to any single clicks or any single visits we are making to a url now imagine if i am recording a voice uh, you know an audio saying that i bagmishika puhan from so and so place i have uh, been explained the terms of the contract and on such date and such time i am saving this particular i am executing this contract and this is hereby uh, supposed to be treated as my consent now that entire piece well i am assuming and i'm not a technologist here but i'm certain will be creating more space and will capture a lot of storage space in their records than a simple entry saying uh, a click wrap where i have put a tick mark and there's an entry made that this person has ticked at this particular time from this ip device now i'm just saying from a cost perspective of creating an data uh, sorry an um, audit trail even that will consume so much space i think you know when when they know there is if i am not signing i'll get somebody else to sign on my behalf so they're happy with it so i think the uptake is something which has not come to the fore so much that there is you know more of uh, there's this uh, drive to innovate in that uh, pace right no makes sense makes sense very interesting babushika uh, that brings me to krishna kant and this is really a last question because we're out of time before we take the q and a is coming from the audience 
Um, Krishna Khan, what is your take on uh, inclusive online internet for trade? And how do you think we can improve it with voice-driven apps, especially, you know, for the micro-business and the MSMEs? Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you asked the question at uh, a very right juncture because I was about to, uh, you know, uh, where Bhagmishika mentioned about the problem. Uh, I think now the situation may improve because she raised a very valid point of space, you know, about the space, that, that virtual space you need to keep things, you know, because now... Even, even the data is a thing, it's, a, it's considered as good as a hard thing. Okay? So that's true. But now when you're doing a distributed uh, system wherein you have distributed server farms all over the world, and you know, with blockchain, there is no one particular entity where you, which can decide whether this is you know, the final thing or not. You know, uh, I'm not getting into a lot of technical stuff, but uh, in a nutshell, yes, uh, with the help of the distributed uh, you know, uh, disk space architectures available now, with blockchain can you know helping out to keep the integrity right and with all the data science uh, processing happening it's only about uh, some big initiatives uh, taken so taking from there uh, i'll tell you what uh, i be began by saying that you know we have 5g in, in india and i can specifically talk about india uh, but the inclusivity is not at uh, power at which it was ought to be, or it was supposed to be there, you know, because we talked about things like Mission 2020, Dr. ABC Abdul Kalam used to talk about it. And uh, I had a brief conversation with him back then, a, a long time back. And I uh, told him, I said, I modestly disagreed with you for a simple reason, and I'm now vindicated that this is not going to happen when, you know, this print disability and all the issues I took ahead. And I said, it will take a lot of time. So when I talk specifically about uh, micro trade and small businesses and all, if if uh, we make it inclusive and we can using voice driven interfaces, the only thing which puts these people away from uh, using technology and scaling their business, no matter what their uh, business type is, is that they find it number one, it's very complicated. Second, the disability which they have, which which could be visual, which could be uh, not having hands and stuff. Third, uh, there is a general phobia of, you know, is is this really uh, going to help me without without harming me? Now, if you know, voice interfaces is something which uh, you feel that it's it's mera apna hai karke kind of, you know, it's like a human talking. If I if I start using uh, Alexa or you know Google Assistant in front of my parents who are very old. They really get astonished if phone se baat ki ja sakti like a human, you know, you can talk with a phone. So, you know, the kind of businesses which we are talking and we are uh, looking at the bottom side of the pyramid, huge amounts of small businesses, what, 57 million uh, small businesses today. 57 million is not a small figure. And if we can give them interfaces where they have zero learning curve, except the fact that they should know how to talk, which they do know. And if we see to it that... They, the voice driven interfaces are tuned around their way of speaking, not the other way around. We don't have to train them. Ki aise baat karo. We have to understand, we have to uh, know how they talk, what is their jargons, what is their business lingo, which they use uh, during normal trading hours on their shop, in their uh, dispensary, in a local, you know, subsea market or a fertilizer supplier or a small logistics uh, provider tour agent, you know, uh, I, I stay in Goa, so I know what tour agents do. So you see, when these colloquialities come into play, when the voice interfaces become something which they can feel it's mine, it's about, you know, I'm talking to my own assistant who's coming from my own village, such should be the interface comfort of voice driven interfaces. And uh, it's not too difficult to do technically. Uh, all that you need is a great initiative. Right. Um, so, Krishna Khan, I think with that, uh, we have run out of time. So, I'll take a couple of quick questions that are coming in there, you know, a whole bunch of questions coming in. Oh, <laughs> I'll have a follow-up question to both of you coming from uh, uh, those who are attending this session. Is um, what do you think should be should be an opportunity for startups in India? So, I'll go first with Krishna Khan Bane and then to Bhagmishika. Uh, KK, what do you think are the opportunities for uh, for, for startups, and I think you mentioned quite a bit, but if yes. you want to leave one mantra behind, what would it be? Uh, it's a simple cliche, you know, problem and pain is the mother of all innovation. So we already know what the pain is. And we know that there is so much uh, startup investment happening. 
uh, we do have a lot of futuristic investors here, uh, futuristic angel investors who know that this is not going to yield profits, so to speak, in the coming three, four years. I think startups should start looking for, uh, you know, uh, incubators who are into, you know, uh, doing such things. And if you have a product, like my company already has a product which is doing pretty well and there are users using it. Now we want to modify it and become, a, a, you know, a, a pioneer in a different way with the voice driven interfaces. We need government support, government agencies like, you know, there are so many, so many NICs, the NICs is there. Uh, the information technology ministry has a lot of programs going on. Or you can have accelerators who really understand what, uh, what uh, is being done. And technically speaking, let me say this very clearly. Today is a world of integration. So I don't have to develop as a startup owner, as a tech startup owner or a founder. I will tell you what, I don't have to develop everything right from scratch. You can actually get, like I want to develop a certain thing. 99% of those components are available already. They are individual components in themselves. All that you have to do is you have to take those components together. Just in the olden days, the electronic person would build a printed circuit board with all the ICs and you know transistors and capacitors. This is exactly what you have to do now. Almost everything is there. You have to integrate it smartly. And the remaining 1% is your innovation, how you manipulate it. So that's my message to all the tech startups. It's not that difficult to do once you have a good investor. Wow. I mean, that's quite a bit. Uh, thank you, KK. And moving to Bak Mishika, same question to you. So just adding to what KK said, because of digital innovation and, you know, now we are talking about a pre-IIG conference, uh, there's so much of uh, help or policy guidelines which are coming from the central government and as well as state governments. One of the good opportunities is at least I can identify three sectors. That's your telecom, health and finance where there are a lot of regulatory sandboxes which have been created. So for startups from a legal point of view, where they have the innovation that you know they want to base upon, they can integrate themselves or they can apply for these programs and they will be given test laws to work around it. So that way they can actually test out a product with a closed user group and also see that they are you know, acting in compliance with law. Then they can take it forward how they want to you know go about with the product. 51 yeah. minutes. Great. Great. Sounds great. Uh, I think uh, that brings me to the second question that I see that has popped up. Uh, and I'll pose it back to you, back Mishiga, because it is in continuation with what you said. And the question is, what do you think should the government of India be doing to promote voice-based internet? First, I think they should come up with a policy statement for which you and I will have to work towards convincing them that there is a general requirement. And it is actually in line with the innovation schemes that they are already proposing. So when they're talking about, you know, an open governance, digital uh, commerce network, when they're trying to uh, bring in an inclusive framework for small uh, and medium enterprises, as well as large platforms to actually give them technology to support the smaller companies, it be first thing that the government needs to do is bring out a policy roadmap. Then from there on, they can talk about, you know, like I said, couple it with the regulatory sandboxes and then see how to take it forward from there with a larger law or probably with light touch regulation. Great. Uh, KK, over to you. What do you think the government should be doing? Uh, and you have worked with I, IIT Bombay on various issues. So Yes, yes, uh, yes. What do you think the government I think uh, Bagmishika has already said it. Uh, I want to ask one question to uh, Bagmishika on, on the basis of which I can actually further say something. Is uh, voice samples also considered to be a, a biological part of a, a person legally? So in India, there is no clear cut uh, distinction made, mm. but uh, under European laws, they have added that uh, voice uh, inputs can be added as biometric references. And that's probably uh, so, we'll look at okay. also. So to add to what uh, Bhagmishika said, I think the government will have to do a lot of sensitization. You know, the way a government has gone about, uh, you know, executing a plan to let people invest in mutual funds, you know, mutual funds, sahi hai. so many uh, uh, ads come from the finance and commerce ministry. You see, you, you all know, right, what happened with Aadhaar when Aadhaar came, there was so much of uh, opposition and some parts of the opposition were genuine and correct. I wouldn't say they were wrong. Okay. The fingerprint thing was there, the eye, eye, iris scanner, even I was against it because I, I wouldn't be able to get the privilege of an eye, uh, Aadhaar card just because I don't have uh, a retina, right? So such a thing is going to happen because there will be a lot of hoo life, uh, you know, these things go to the level of uh, an Aadhaar, you know, centralized voice banks wherein, you know, if you want to prove the genuineness of a voice or you want to do stuff. 
so a lot of because technologically i don't have to say any further because i've already told that all the tools are available you have to just be a smart integrator you have to be a smart innovator and you actually can do proper co combinations and permutations of uh, stuff but a lot of sensitization will be needed to keep, to make people understand you need not be afraid of this and as bagmi kishika has already said that you need a legal infrastructure proper policy but a lot of sensitization at the very zero ground level is going to be required to let people understand and encourage them to use this because policy might be there technology might be there but what if the phobia continues and that that can only be done by government through the media available today great i think uh, we've completely run out of time but this has been an absolutely stunningly enlightening session uh, i learned a lot and i hope uh, uh, the rest of the the delegates of been online um, also had a lot of learning from this session i hope uh, this really puts um, the efforts of having a print blind enabled internet uh, into the next year you know many of us has been uh, of us have been working on it for over 10 12 years Uh, and KK, you and I have been um, uh, partnering to push these policies forward. Yes, we have had many events. We, you know, we have had the government adopting uh, the CAT4 standards, uh, the the standards which enables the government websites to be enabled to be read by a by a screen reader. I think we have had successes, but we need more. Still, uh, many more. And um, I think India needs to take that lead because uh, we are the ones who really need this solution. uh so there's been uh, a, a, a absolutely brilliant conversation i've been able to learn a lot from this and this was part of the pre india internet governance forum which is uh, a a curtain raiser sessions of the india internet governance forum which is being held under the aegis of unigf so i would request everybody to also attend uh, the uh, india igf which will happen in the first week of december and with that i would like to thank krishan kant mane and bagmishika puhan we have been very very privileged to have both of you in today's session and we will look forward to many such sessions in the future thank, thank you, you so much thanks krishna kant great jay jit actually we would have uh, loved to hear more from you actually because there's much more to learn from you that's a kind of you those are very kind words i'm sure we'll have more such sessions and we'll exchange ideas sure. thank you yeah okay thank you <laughs> bye